All right, YouTube, a group of people that knows better than anybody else the dangers of Islamofascism, the, the Hindu Sena movement, uh, Indian uh, Hindu nationalists essentially within India. They have to deal on a regular basis uh, with the possibility of border incursions and atomic war with Pakistan, uh, the foremost, uh, most hyper-religious Islamic state you can probably think of. Uh, that has any real international presence whatsoever, you know, as a part to, uh, you know, maybe Afghanistan or something like that, where they farm opium and uh, admittedly get crippled by the West every few decades. Uh, the Hindu nationalists have been praying for Donald Trump to win the U.S. election. Uh, the concept is that he is the only person currently in U.S. politics that appears capable uh, of understanding that Islam Islamic fundamentalism is indeed a problem. Uh, Bernie Sanders apologizes for Islamofascism wherever he goes. Obama has done the same uh, to save face. I don't think he has any deep-seated like loyalty to Islam, as some may claim. It's it's about he's in office. He doesn't want a bunch of terrorist attacks, so he forces these bureaus to reclassify them as workplace violence or a mental ill, mentally ill shooter. This dude bombed people because he, he had an Oedipus complex or something. It wasn't all those surahs he was reading. Uh, he is the only person in U.S. politics that is fully capable of dealing with this issue, at least in the minds of these Hindu nationalists. Uh, I have my own thoughts that I've made quite clear on how I would deal with Islamofascism. Uh, I don't think that it necessitates a surveillance apparatus, because that surveillance apparatus is not necessary if you actually have a coherent immigration system. We do not. Uh, Trump is arguing for that, although he still supports the surveillance apparatus. I see that as a problem, but at least he's half right. Nobody else is even 0% right there. They're in the negative numbers because everything that they fucking possibly could do, everything that they talk about is counterproductive to solving the issue. The first thing is that you must accept that Islamic extremism actually exists. That there are elements of the Islamic dogma that are used to encourage violence. When we look back as Westerners at the Dark Ages, what we are seeing is that people committed violence in the name of Jesus, in the name of God the Father, in the name of the Holy Spirit, because they interpreted elements of Scripture which were not debated, they were considered objective, they interpreted them as allowing them to commit violence. And it worked really well for those in positions of power as well, who often, who themselves weren't even necessarily religious. Look at al-Baghdadi, who knows if he even believes in an Allah. It was used as a way for them to gain money and power. Power corrupts. Money is a corrupting influence. It's what happens in this fucking world. And if you ignore that fact, then, then seriously, you need to study a little bit of world history. Just a cursory overview will show you that this is the case. And so we can't be blind to the fact that, yes, indeed, Christianity is not the only dogma that ever existed that can be used to condone violence. Because a lot of people, they, they're so used to Christianity being hegemonic that they feel it's perfectly okay to talk about all the horrible things Christians did. Well, yeah, I mean, I talk about that too. But what about Islam? They then go on this weird apology tour where they say Islam is, but Islam is foreign, or it's a brown people religion, so you can't criticize it. Damn you, I'll criticize Islam all fucking day. Trump criticizes Islam. He gets called a Nazi, a racist, a bigot, every name in the book for doing so. But he's actually right. Yeah, there are people within the Islamic faith, both those that are genuinely religious and simply interpreted as being violent, uh, literally or figuratively, and it really depends on the sect you're talking about, and those who then say, well, we've got all these religious zealots that are willing to die for Islam. I bet I can turn these into really effective troops to take over this oil rig, or to take over this town, or to take over this area of opium, or something like that. And that's what they do. It's as simple as that. It's just like what happened in the, in the fucking Dark Ages. The Crusaders come through, and they screw the Byzantines, and burn half of Constantinople to the ground. A bunch of Christians get killed. They said, oh, well, we're doing it for the glory of God. You're like heretics or something. 
they didn't even just focus on what had originally been their enemy. They, they didn't even focus on, well, we need to secure this coast for travelers. We need to be pious, do pilgrimage to Jerusalem and, and look for relics or, or whatever the hell they wanted to do. It wasn't even about that. They just wanted power and gold and to amass all of this wealth and so forth. They were even willing to rape, torture, and kill other Christians in order to achieve that end. You look at a group like ISIS or Al-Qaeda, they're very much similar. The people that are in charge of these groups may themselves not even be religious half the time, but they're sure as hell going to use those religious zealots to go out and do the dirty work for them. Because, you know, al-Baghdadi on his own with an AK-47 is not going to be able to, to hold a city. You know, he's not going to sit there on the rooftop lobbing grenades at anybody who gets near him because he's just a total fucking lunatic. No, he has tens of thousands of other well-armed, well-trained individuals using now Western weapons, because they got it from the so-called moderate rebels that Obama's friends with, to uh, attack our troops, to attack anybody else that happens to stand in their way because what they want is land, they want the oil, they want control of the oil, they want control of everything else. That's what they want, and they do want a caliphate. But our politicians in the West are so stupid that they don't even realize the. I don't even think they've studied the Islamic dogma enough to know, yes, there are verses in there that can quite literally be used to excuse this sort of violence. They're in the Quran. They're certainly in the Hadiths. Read the Sahih al-Bukhari. If I read the Bible, and an increasingly small, unfortunately, number of secularists have done so, I can find lots and lots of verses in there that condone all sorts of different acts of violence. That's why Christianity lends itself to violence. Not all Christians are violent, yeah, but unfortunately a large number of them in the third world still chop people's heads off and burn them at the stake for being a witch. But these same people, even if they admit that that's the case, say, okay, yeah, there's some violence in the fucking Bible, I mean, it's kind of insane. They've never read the Quran, they've never read the Hadiths, and yet they claim to know there's no violence in there because they read on some Islamic website, or they heard from some idiot politician, or they heard from some retarded cleric, there's no violence in Islam. This isn't Islam. Read the damn Quran. Read it for yourself. Read all about how Muhammad commanded his horde of followers to behead and torture and rape and enslave, slay the pagans, slay the, uh, the Christians and Jews, uh, double cross and backstab them a few times too, drive this group of people out and do all these things. Now the Islamic answer given by mainstream Muslims, comparable to like mainstream Christians as well, yeah, that was Muhammad forcing out these blood-drinking pagans. We don't do that anymore. That was, he, they needed control of the holy land of Mecca. Okay, that's fine, but those verses can still be used to condone evil if they're interpreted a different way. All somebody like Baghdadi or a fucking Osama or something has to do is say, oh, well, no, these verses are still literal. They're still in effect. That's what the Christians did. The Jews did the same thing. The Jews would go on various pogroms, too, against their neighbors. They didn't care if it was outdated or not meant to be taken literally, or that's just superstition from the past or something. They still believe in it to this day if they're hyper-religious, the Orthodox Jews. They still believe in all of those laws. They still practice those old laws. They still sit for hours and pore over scriptures and, and dogmatic opinions given by various Jewish Orthodox scholars to try to figure their way through the supposed divine secret or whatever. These groups still do these things. I'm not surprised that the Hindu, who are, who are in India, India and Pakistan originally one area, part of it's Islamic, part of it's Hindu, they split. Now they both got atomic weapons. They're constantly fighting over their border. There's a, Mus a Muslim minority as well in India. That they, they, There's constant problems, political problems and cultural problems and so forth. So yeah, I, I'm not surprised that the Hindu, who are busy praising Ganesha and, and this is the only like fucking Hindu state there is, I'm not surprised that they're a little bit worried about the fact that most of their neighbors are Islamic states. I'm not surprised at that fact. I'm not surprised that they're, that they're in the same region as like Pakistan. They're not far away from the Arabian Peninsula. They're near Bang, you know, Bangladesh, which is majority Islamic and so forth. I'm not surprised that they're concerned about it. You know, they, I've been, uh, uh, I've liked a Facebook page on uh, Facebook. I know that's a little bit redundant, sorry there. It's early in the day, you know, I've only had a cup and a half of coffee. Anyway, uh, I've been liking this page for some time, 
and you know some of it's in in like uh hindi language like sanskrit or something so i have to like use the auto translate sometimes it may not be quite accurate but i mean i see some stuff there it's like we must pre preserve hindu rajma we must produce we must uh preserve our culture we must preserve our religion because we're the only ones that fucking have it the Islamic world's huge. Lots of countries are majority Muslim or even theocratically Islamic. We're the only Hindu state, so we've got to preserve this. We've got to enforce this way of life. I don't. I don't want to see Hinduism wiped out. I, I'm sure that the Hindu don't want to see Hinduism wiped out as well. It'd be like if you have a bunch of Hindu immigrants to some city in the West, you know, Europe or something, and then a bunch of Muslims start mass immigrating. They're going to feel kind of threatened now, aren't they? They're, they're probably going to be like UKIPers or something, or like, you know, Nazi party members or something. Because at that point, they're saying, we, we left, we wanted more opportunity. We wanted, we wanted security and stability. We wanted the clean air and we wanted the good jobs and the money and so forth that the West had to offer. They move in. Then all of a sudden, those people that they always had a problem with, they were always worried there was going to be like an atomic conflict over the Pakistani-Indian uh, border or something. All of a sudden, the, the tiny Hindu neighborhood is like surrounded by Islamists or something. Naturally, they're not going to feel very good about that fact. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised that they're begging the Hindu gods for Trump to succeed. By the way, their prayers are probably going to be answered. It doesn't matter if they're praying to Shiva or, or Hanuman or Ganesha. It doesn't really matter uh, because at the end of the day, the American people have begun to wake up to the fact they've been lied to for decades. The GOP establishment lied to them and said things would be peachy keen if only we got rid of Saddam Hussein. Wow, how well that worked out. I'm, that was just a great fucking idea. Things are so stable in the Middle East. Mesopotamia and the Levant are like first world democracies now and shit. And then Obama, he spent all of his time in office sort of sulking and doing his, fa his Bill Cosby-esque facial mugging and talking about how there's no Islamo-fascism, Islamic extremism's not even real. It's all in your bigoted head, you stupid fucking cracker Nazi. That's all he talks about at this point. He, like, you, if you say for even a moment that there's an, even an element of violence in Islamic dogma that could possibly be interpreted as being violent, apparently you're like a skinhead or something. But it's there. I ask this, if I'm a secularist, I, I mean, as a secularist, I'm not really at home in the right wing. The traditional conservatives think that I'm like going to hell to burn forever and stuff. So on that token, I would feel a little bit closer to like, I guess, the secular progressive left. But at the same time, I point out the excesses and the possible problems of Christian dogma where it's interpreted literally. And they say, well, of course, you're right. Uh, yeah, we need to get past that stupidity because we're, we're enlightened now. We're developed. We're, we're civilized people, only they don't use the civilized term. They play the civilized game without using the civilized name. It's really the same exact thing. It's just us, the, the glorious atheists and agnostic stuff, versus those horrible religious barbarians. Except for Islam. Because if it's Islam and you criticize them, all of a sudden you're not a secularist, now you're just a, a Nazi or something. You're a horrible big, you hate brown-skinned people. Never mind the fact that a lot of brown-skinned people get killed by Islam. But no, you're still a Nazi. It couldn't be that you're tired of seeing your own president, who's supposed to represent the U.S. interest, not, not some other fucking country's interest, waddle around in his own filth and stupidity and talk about how the Fort Hood shooter, that was workplace violence because he didn't want to pay the families anything and didn't, during his re-election bid, want a terrorist attack to have happened. So he lied. And what about Benghazi and all of these other things? It's just a stream of nonstop stupidity from Obama. It was a stream of nonstop stupidity from Bush, too. Bush apologized for Islam as well. Well, we can't, we can't cast the evil eye over all Islam. The thing is, though, there are elements of the dogma itself that are potentially violent. It's there. It's in the Quran, in black and white for the entire world to see. But 99% of the population that defends Islam has never read a single verse from the Quran unless it was supplied to them by an Islamic apologetic site. That's the problem. Read the Quran. Just like I've encouraged atheists and and pagans and stuff if you want to understand how to refute christianity how it's specifically got problems read the bible because it's all there 
And the, the Christians accept that as true, inspired, divine, whatever, more or less. Well, read the Quran. That's what the Muslims use as the foundation of their religion. Yeah, a lot of it's, you know, do, do shahada and, and uh, be, you know, be honest, be courteous, be pious or whatever. But then there's uh, verses like, you know, fucking kill this non-believer, drive this person out. And it really starts to sound a lot like the Old Testament. And even a lot of, like, secular Jews will say, yeah, that stuff, that's all, like, ancient history. They were barbarians back then. We don't do that anymore because we don't do any of this bullshit anymore other than, you know, eat the matzo balls or something. It's the same basic concept. Yes, it can be used for violence. So I'm not surprised that they're praying for Trump to win. Because if Hillary wins, it's going to be four more years of the same bullshit, apologizing for a foreign religion simply because many of its adherents happen not to be white Westerners. That's the only reason. It's simply a campaign strategy to take the moral high ground, praise, praise Islam, pretend that it's bigoted to oppose it, when in reality, your opposition to it is dogmatic. It's not racial or ethnic or because it's a foreign group of people. I would have the same problem with a white, homegrown, Westerner Islamist who believes literally in this sort of shit as I would some, some foreign-born Muslim, brown-skinned person, as the Democrats would probably love to term it if they were being honest for a day who believes the same thing, because it's literally the same thing. It's the same dogma, same danger, same with Christianity, same with all these fucking cults. So yeah, I, I'm going to listen to the Hindu nationalists when they say, yeah, Islam's a problem here too, please vote for Donald Trump. Still voting for Gary Johnson though, just to be honest. That's about all. Peace out.